When the Steam Deck came out last year, I, uh, I didn't even know it was announced. At the time, I already had a PC that played all of the games I wanted to play. If I wanted to play games on the go, then I would just get something dedicated for that. So, you know, you have your Switches, the, the DS line, um, but you know, prior to knowing about the Steam Deck and other handheld PCs, I always thought it would be kind of cool to bring my games portably, but like it wasn't mandatory or anything. You know, my Steam games belong on my desktop, at my desk, and that's the way it's been. That's the way it always will be. I'm a PC games at home guy. Can you see where this is going? Something's moved. Also, hi, I'm Dylan. If you're not already aware, this is the Valve Steam Deck. Its whole purpose is to bring PC games into a portable format. You know, if you play games, then you're probably already familiar with Steam. It's a huge platform that has anything from you know, indie titles to the big AAA releases. So, you know, you can see the appeal. I've had mine for roughly six months. I really, really, really like this thing. It's changed the way I think about why and where I play my games in a way that brings me back to my roots or something. This is my desk. I, I do work here, allegedly. Before, when I had my PC, which would probably be stationed around there, this would be both my work desk and also my gaming entertainment desk. And that was a bit of an issue. I don't know if any of you feel this way, but having the work desk connotation makes me not want to play video games. I would sit at this desk playing games on the same computer that I would use to make, you know, some videos and do other work stuff. It would instill like this sense of, of guilt almost or, or shame, you know, thinking to myself like, oh, this is wrong or, you know, I could be doing work right now. Not only that, but it was just kind of boring at the desk. Lamian fans might recognize, you know, the set change, but in case you're not aware, this is what my desk used to look like. It was not fun. It was not productive. It sucked. Having this like quasi hybrid setup was one of the biggest reasons why I stopped playing video games for a while. The other, you know, being that I was just busy, but this was a big contributor. Because, well, I didn't really particularly enjoy sitting in this one spot to play games. It just, it felt like a chore. Eventually, yes, I sold my PC in February to get the Steam Deck. I didn't want to be stationed at my work desk pretending to be my gaming desk anymore. So here we are six months later and I love it. Anything in the house that has a seat has likely been occupied by me playing this thing. The couch, the bed, my office chair, not on my desk, the floor, whatever, it's portable. Because I wasn't tethered to my desk anymore, I didn't have the same feelings I associated with the desk. The deck is super comfortable, even though it's massive compared to a Switch or something, it doesn't feel very heavy. It feels actually made for your hands with a control scheme that actually makes sense. I thought the sticks and buttons being on one axis would be kind of weird, but it's actually pretty comfortable. It's way better than the Switch's stupid joystick palm knuckle maneuvering whatever. Oh, and the trackpads are cool. I guess. It's this comfort and ease of use that makes games just fun to play again. I don't have to like sit at my computer desk and then turn on my computer and then turn on Steam and then open my game. Those sound like, you know, minute things, but they add up. Nowadays, if I'm in the mood to play games, I can just boot up and play. I usually don't want to see like anything that has to do with computer stuff. <laughs> the, the Steam Deck created a problem for me and then immediately solved it. Freeing my PC games from my work desk and putting it in my hands. Anywhere. Putting putting them in my hands. That's that's because it's plural. But God damn it. Story time. I had divorced parents growing up, so moving houses was routine in my case. Fortunately, I was a Nintendo kid, so uh, my first gaming experience with the relatives Wii led me to getting a DSi. I don't don't have it anymore, but I, I wish I did, but that thing rocked. Because of how often I had to move around, this thing was indispensable. Like, the concept of my room came with an asterisk because, like, you know, let's say if I had a home console in one house at one place, there'd be a couple of days where, you know, I wouldn't be able to play video games. And for a kid, that's, that's the end of the world. With a handheld, I could take it between homes. I could take it anywhere, and, you know, that I did. No, sure, I could reasonably bring like 
a PlayStation or an Xbox and go set it up at the other house. But, you know, for obvious reasons, that wasn't remotely considered. No, that's, that's dumb, that's stupid. The whole appeal of a handheld is that you can take it anywhere. Uh, which typically means outside your house. And while I did bring it out of the house on you know, trips, playdates, whatever, that DSi spent most of its time at home as if it just were like a normal console. Like I spent a lot of time playing at home and in my room, the kitchen, the backyard, if the house had a room, I probably played in it. I think this might explain why I got a Steam Deck and why I've basically only owned handhelds. Like I had this DSi XL, uh, then I had a 3DS, and then a Switch, and now the Steam Deck, right? The pick-up-and-play mindset is just so much lighter and easier than the sit-down-and-play nature of, you know, being at a console or being at a PC. A killer feature that all of these consoles have in common is the suspend to sleep. If you need to stop playing for whatever reason, you can just put it to sleep and then pick it up later like you never left. It makes those casual gaming sessions just so much easier and possible, right? I mean, I couldn't do that on my PC. I have other stuff to do, right? I'm not going to be having a game running while I write papers or, hell, edit video. That's just, that's no bueno. Whereas with a, whereas with like the Steam Deck or, you know, a console, it's all gaming for me, right? I can pick it up, I can play it, I focus on my games, and that's exactly what I want. Yes, I'm in my kitchen. If I had to pick whether the deck was a PC or a console, I would say it's much more closer to the latter. Okay, let's say if the benchmark for a console is, you know, the ability to buy the console, buy the game and then play, then the Steam Deck offers that console experience and then some. Valve has put a lot of work into their Deck Verified program where it shows you, hey, what games run well, what games are playable and what games are unsupported. And while, yes, you do have to put a little bit of work uh, compared to just buying the game for the PlayStation, Xbox, which is out there, it's very seamless. It's pretty good, actually, because even then it's barely any extra work. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, Risk of Rain 2 was on sale recently, and it's on my wish list. My friend got it, and he said, hey, this game is good. We should play. Uh, you should get it. I went on the store page, and then it said verified. And I was like, oh, okay, good. Yep. Uh-huh. Boom, I bought it and I'm playing. Like, it was that easy. And this is a Windows game. There was never a Linux version. Something I neglected to kind of mention was that uh, the Steam Deck runs Steam OS and not Windows. It's a custom Linux distribution that was designed for the Steam Deck. You can't just run Windows games on Linux. You have to run them through something called a compatibility layer. And basically it just translates Windows into working on Linux. It's much more complicated than that, but it makes things work. I used to run Linux on my computer, and before the Steam Deck was out, you'd have to go on ProtonDB.com, which is a great resource, but also it's, mm, I mean, it's not very fun going to check a website if you can play or not, and going back and then seeing what tweaks you have to do. It's, ugh. And I mean, a lot of things just work on the Steam Deck like you'd expect from a console. I mean, the Steam OS interface is very easy to navigate. Uh, you can put it into sleep mode and just pick it up later. Uh, the Steam Store is integrated and you can just buy your games and install them. They're in your library and they're right there for you. It has all the qualities of a modern console. Not to mention it's excellent controls, right? I touched on it earlier, but these are really good. Like full-size joysticks, um, these buttons feel very nice. Uh, the triggers are great. The back pedals here are fantastic. I use these in a lot of games. And of course, I can't go without mentioning the trackpads again, which I don't use a whole lot, but they're very good for mouse-centric stuff. I know if I don't mention that, a lot of people will be upset, so, you know. <laughs> but with this, you know, console likeness, I think it's also fair to call it a PC as well. You can go into desktop mode, with, which is exactly what you expect it to be. And, you know, the Steam Deck's whole thing is to play PC games. Like, hell, Valve advertises the deck as a handheld PC and not really a console. This is what makes the Steam Deck unique. Its flexibility doesn't just come from the form factor of, you know, being able to bring it anywhere. It extends to the actual use of the device. You can do anything on it, be it in software or, you know, the hardware. I did a poll on Mastodon. You can follow me at sunfish at ohio.social. <clears throat> and with a sample size of uh, 19, <laughs> uh, people think that the deck is more of a PC than 
console, but even then it's really, really close. Okay, okay, guys. <laughs> PC gaming has a little bit of a steeper learning curve compared to just buying a PlayStation or an Xbox or a Switch or whatever. And while the Steam Deck doesn't alleviate all the pains of PC gaming, it definitely makes the process much easier. See, if you want to get into playing games on PC, you need to know what parts to get, uh, how well do games run on your parts, how to assemble your PC, assuming you're assembling it, how to optimize the game settings, you know, how to install drivers, updates. Ugh, this process is flexible, but it's a lot. And I'm not saying this hard work isn't rewarding at all. I, I think it's a great experience and, you know, an overall fun time, but no amount of PC master race head assery is gonna convince someone who just wants to play games and end it at that. Console gaming is comparatively simple. You buy the console, you buy the game, and then optionally you pay for whatever stupid subscription they have and you play. Games made for consoles are guaranteed to run on that hardware. You don't need to worry if you're making the right choice. Your biggest concerns probably consist of what platforms your friends play on and what exclusives you want. The Steam Deck combines both what makes PC gaming flexible and what makes console gaming simple. I mean, yes, you can mod and tweak all you like, but you don't have to. Like the only mod that I did on this was the storage drive, the SSD. I swapped that out for a bigger one, but there's an even easier way of doing it and it just involves a micro SD card that you just slap in and that works just fine. It's not all perfect though. You might not be able to avoid booting into like the desktop mode for non-Steam games like, you know, on Epic, on Origin. That's not a thing anymore. So, well, you know, those launchers, which that sucks. If you find a game that is unsupported on Steam, it's more or less up to you to get it working. Like, okay. I wanted to play Yakuza 5 Remastered, right? To get it working, you need to import cutscene files from Yakuza 3, a different game, and put it into Yakuza 5's files, and then it'll run, but it'll play wrong cutscenes at certain times, so you need to have, like, YouTube open with the cutscenes, and it's just... Ugh, what a nightmare. Also adding on to the simplicity and well, constraints of consoles, the Steam Deck is not the most powerful thing in the world. It's not gonna be running AAA titles at, like, ultra 60 fps right that's not what it's for i would say it's more suited for you know good to great fidelity gaming rather than like an ultimate premium experience uh, if you mainly play you know less demanding and you know, older games are emulation <laughs> <clears throat> the deck is great for that clearly the steam deck and even just linux gaming in general isn't perfect it still has many of the pains of PC gaming, but it's an overall great handheld experience. I'm super biased, so of course I recommend this thing, but I understand it's not for everyone. Sometimes a PC or a real console is just better. I mean, you might be able to do like live streaming off of this thing, but I don't know how great of an experience that would be. And you're sure as hell not going to get 4K 120 FPS ultra on this. There's no, that's not happening. When I had the PC, I really cared about that. I wanted to get like the most out of my computer because I'm spending a lot of money, I want a good experience. But with the Steam Deck, I've just kind of stopped caring about that. I just want to play games. And if they look like not great, then that's fine. It won't really matter because the screen is so small. And hey, it's the novelty of being able to bring it portably. I, I don't really care that much anymore. If you're like me and you just want to play games on your couch, your bed, or whatever, and you don't need top of the line specs, then hey, I think it's absolutely at least worth a try. And hey, who knows? Maybe you'll also change the way you think about games too. Now, excuse me. Hi, hello, thanks for watching this episode of Sunfish. Uh, this episode two, post conclusion. <laughs> I don't know why I did it like this. First of all, I'm, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you're interested in getting a Steam Deck in the comments below. And if you like this video, please, please give it a like. If you didn't like it, dislike it, tell me why. Um, subscribe if you want to see more me, really. <laughs> I still don't have a focus for this channel, but I hope maybe you'll enjoy the ride somewhere, somehow. And hey, please share this video with someone who was remotely interested in playing video games. Because I know some of you aren't. Hey, I mean, fans. Uh, but yeah, I I didn't have much time to fit in some of the other, like, handhelds because, I mean, the Steam Deck is not the first 
handheld PC, right? You have people like IMEO, or people like companies like IMEO, GPD, and you know, the ROG Ally, but I don't have any experience with those, so I didn't want to talk about them. But hey, DYOR. D anyway, that's about it. Um, I'm not within touching distance, so you better get over it.